Welcome back. So we have a couple of pieces of enlisted news coming in uh, a little bit yesterday and a little bit today. First off, we have Improving Berlin. So essentially, there's a series of updates to the Berlin maps. The Road to the Reichstag, they've added new pathways to the southern part of the Ministry of the Interior, where before there was only one pathway. Basically, it's going to make it easier to move between the Kroll Opera House and the Ministry. Probably a good thing. That objective right after you took the Embassy there used to be very difficult, especially in the game mode where you have to take uh, one flag, then two flags at the same time, and then two flags at the same time. That intermediate objective in the middle used to be awful. Um, getting both of them at the same time, my teams usually would ping pong. Either they'd have the left or they'd have the right, and sometimes we'd make it through, sometimes we wouldn't, but hopefully that'll make that objective a little bit more competitive. I feel like more often than not, teams really struggled on that objective, though. Moving on from there, the Reich's Chancellery. Oh, they also opened some blocked windows here, which, eh, it's neither here nor there. There were already a lot of ways into the embassy. Anyway, onto the Reich's Chancellery. This one's kind of big to me. Before there were two corridors on the east and one on the west, they've opened up one more corridor on the west, and getting into Hitler's office has often been a very interesting fight, but it can be very difficult. Now, you can come from the outside of the building, um, but there's inside the building a lot of very long lines of fire where a machine gun or two can absolutely lock down an area. Uh, I've also seen people build AT guns inside some of those hallways, so opening up an additional route will probably help that map. In addition, they've also solved the problem of the easily destroyable covers, so hopefully it'll become less of a shit show in there. There were times before where all of the cover and the concealment that's in that main hallway there could be destroyed, and then you'd basically have one big, long, wide-open corridor from one door to the other, and whichever side got in there and built emplacements first usually just locked it down, so... Probably a good change. Additionally, they changed the height of some of the windows, and they've made some changes to the civilian housing and barricaded some areas. Now, this objective right here that this overlooks, that very first objective, I would like to see something change there. I'm not sure what, but in my experience, teams either take that first objective, and then they take everything and they win, or they can't take that first objective at all, and that's just the end of the match. And it's cool having really impactful, decisive objectives. I just don't know if the first objective of the map should be the objective that decides the rest of the match. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of places to hold out further along that particular map, it's just in my experience, if a team breaks through that first objective, then usually the other team doesn't stop them. Every once in a while, when you get to uh, the edge of the building that Hitler's office is in, um, sometimes you're, the team can hold them there. But generally speaking, if, if my teams break through the first objective, we win the game. If we don't, then we lose. Well, obviously, if we don't, we lose, but you get the idea. But that's also been my experience defending, and this is both playing Germany and playing Russia. It doesn't really seem to matter which faction you are. Anyway, moving on from there, we have one other chunk of news, and that's the Lunar New Year. So, very exciting. There's a little mini-event going on for the next few days. I believe it started yesterday. And basically, there's three stages. You complete each stage, and you get these rewards. And stage one, you kill 70 enemies with a bolt-action rifle. Your engineering structures were used 25 times, and you complete six battles. So, nothing too terribly difficult. Uh, the bolt-action rifle will probably make a lot of people play down, but you could always bring one 
bolt action squad up with you and you probably wouldn't suffer too bad with it. You just don't play as close. Stage 2, 50 enemies with headshots, your engineer structures are used 50 times, and 6 battles, so again, not bad. This is really just build a spawn beacon and build like an ammo dump, and you can probably get it done in a game or two. 6 battles will take a little bit of time, but that's not awful. And killing 50 enemies with headshots... I don't know how often I kill people with headshots. I feel like I mostly shoot for center of mass, but I also do get that, like, paching sound all the time for hitting people in the head, so... I'm sure 50 enemies with headshots won't take that long. Finally, kill 150 enemies as an assaulter, which... that should be pretty easy. And destroy 6 vehicles, which also should be pretty easy, and winning 3 battles. The 150 enemies killed in, as an assaulter is almost just a gimme. It's like a couple of games of playing primarily assaulters, so no biggie there. Just run, gun, and you'll probably get the vehicles destroyed doing the same thing as long as you're carrying explosive packs, but... I mean, you could get the six vehicles done in one match if you play, like, an attack plane that can double as a fighter, because you can come out and bomb a tank, shoot down some enemy planes or bombers or whatever, and... I mean, one bombing run is like five planes, so you could almost get it done in one enemy bombing run. Regardless, looks to be a pretty decent event. You get a cool little icon, you get a cool little dragon name decorator for the Year of the Dragon. More appearance tokens are awesome. I keep just blowing through them every time I get them, so... That's good. The weapon upgrades and the soldier upgrades are kind of nice. They'll make things a little bit less expensive. Well, the soldier upgrades will just speed things up, but the weapon upgrades will make things less expensive. Upgrading some of those BR-345 uh, weapons can get kind of pricey. And 5,000 silver is kind of just chump change, so... It's nice that they're giving you 15,000 total, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much. Still, it's nice that we're getting an event. It looks like this event can be knocked out in one day if you really wanted to. It doesn't look like there's a daily refresh or anything on it, so... Definitely get out there and try to knock this out this weekend. As per usual, kick ass, take names, and win your games.